Let's talk about our next type of organic reactions, addition reactions. So addition reactions are often confused with, with substitution reactions. But if a substitution reaction is like in sports, I have to pull a player off a field to put a player on, then addition reaction is like the time in sports where I can just put players on. Like maybe after power play and I'm short men and so I can, or women, and so I can just put a player on to the ice. Or, I don't know, maybe during a timeout and, and Yahoo decided to tie his shoelaces and I only have four people on the basketball court and then I'm like, go, 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 then you can just add a player onto the field. So the only time we can do an addition reaction is when we're not already saturated in our compound, but rather we are unsaturated. So we have players missing from our field. So the times that we have an unsaturated carbon or compound, I mean, is when we have that double bond or triple bond. So the alkene or the alkyne. And so if I have a double bond or triple bond, then I can add some players to the field. Now the thing, and, and then what I make is one product. Remember for substitution, we always had two products. We had like an alkyl halide and HCl or HBr. So I don't have this and anymore. There's just one compound made because I basically took a guy off the bench and threw him on the field. Nobody came off. So it's not like I have another product to talk about. So one of the things that makes this a little complicated is that this can happen with uh, halogens like chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. Or it can happen with HCl, HBr, HI, or it can happen with H2O, or it can happen with H2. And in each of these cases, because I'm chucking on chlorine, I'm chucking on H and X, I chuck on both of these. Like remember with substitution, we only put one on. Here I'm going to put both on the field, both on the field. Here I'm putting H2O is going to be HOH. And I'm going to put, that's messy, sorry. And I'm going to put both of these on the field. And then here I'm going to put two H's on the field. And then I get all these different products, an alcohol, a more saturated compound, or an alkyl halide. So let's see some examples of that. Okay, there are five examples here which hopefully give you a variety of all of those that I listed on the general reactions. So here is an alkene reacting with water. And when I'm thinking about water I need, for this situation, I need to think of it as HOH. And so what I'm going to have is this double bond breaks and the dangly down bits are here, here and here. So this double bond breaks. So if I'm a carbon and I have a double bond, I break one of my, it's called my pi bond. I break my pi bond and I'm able to grab onto something. And so I'm gonna grab on to an H, okay? So this is grabbing on to an H. Meanwhile, the other carbon that was over here in this double bond also let go of its pi bond and it can grab the OH. So I have carbon double bond, let go of that multiple bond, and I can grab something. I can grab an H, and this one can let go and grab an OH. And so I end up with HOH. So my ethene reacts with water in order to make ethanol. So eth and all, right? So I've made an alcohol out of my alkene. Okay, um, and it's not just water that you need, like you need steam and a catalyst and heat. Okay, so propene reacts with HCl. So here's another example. Here I have my double bond again. So my double bond is gonna break and open up. So this bond breaks and opens up. And if it breaks, then I have a spot available at this carbon and a spot available at that carbon to reach out and grab something. So here it is, right? Here's that spot and here's that spot. And so this was a double bond, but it opens up and it's allowed to grab an H and grab a CL. So the double bond grabbed an H and the other one let go and grabbed a CL. So H, CL. But actually, I let go and I grabbed an H, but I could have let go and grabbed a CL. And so not only could the middle carbon grab the H, but the middle carbon could have also grabbed a CL. So in the lab, you end up with a mixture of these two compounds. You end up with one chloropropane and two chloropropane just a matter of who grabbed that chlorine and who grabbed the hydrogen. 
So anyway, H, Cl, one grabs H, one grabs Cl, water, one grabs H, one grabs OH. So it's the same sort of pattern that we're having here where we take our reactant and we divide it into two and one goes onto one carbon and the other goes onto the other carbon of that multiple bond, okay? They can't go on the same carbon because I can't let go and grab both things. I can only let go of one hand and grab one thing. Um, and the other thing to notice is I only got really one, like one product. I didn't get my HCl formed here or here, right? Like I did with my substitution. Okay, let's look at ethine with limited bromine. So here I have a triple bond and I have a keyword here, limited. And in the next one, I'm going to have excess. Okay. So when it's limited, I can only let go of one of my multiple bonds. So here I have three bonds. Uh, that are possible. So I have like a sigma bond, a pi bond, and another pi bond if I stick up my foot. And so I can let go of one pi bond, I can let go of the other pi bond being my foot, but I can't let go of my sigma bond. Okay, so here with limited, I'm only going to break one of these multiple bonds. So you can see I've only broken one of those bonds and I still have that double bond there. One of the carbons grabbed a BR, well I guess the pink one went to the first guy, didn't he? So that went there, and this went here, the other bromine grabs the other one, but I still have that double bond. With excess, I can break both of those bonds. So here's the first multiple bond that's broken, here's the second multiple bond that's broken, but this really stable sigma bond is very difficult to break, so it's not gonna break, it's gonna hang on tight. And so I end up with, instead of one, two dibromo, uh, ethene, I end up with 1122-tetra-bromoethane if I have excess. So I go all the way to the single bond alkane if I have excess, okay? Uh, and then the last example here is hydrogenation. So hydrogenation is when I'm reacting with a hydrogen, not bromine. Like this would be halogenation, reacting with a halogen. So this is hydrogenation, reacting with hydrogen. Um, and this would be, I guess, hydration, react with water, right? Okay, so I'm going to take a cyclopentene, so it is unsaturated because I have a double bond, and I'm going to add hydrogen to it. So again, open up that double bond, grab an H, grab an H in this case. So here's my cyclopentene. All these hydrogens already belong there. And then I have this extra H2 that I'm adding an H2. So that double bond breaks, there's the double bond breaking, and I ended up with one H on one side of that double bond and the other H on the other side of that double bond. And so I have a, I don't know if you can see those colors very well there. Hey, can I zoom in? Oh, not really. Well, I could do that though. Okay, so I have H and H formed there. And so um, I've gone from cyclopentene to cyclopentane. So I've become a more, uh, more saturated compound. Okay, so that's addition reactions. We just add players to the field because we're already short uh, players, right? It's unsaturated. And so I can just add my players to the field. And the awkward thing about this one is that there's lots of different situations where I add H, H, HCl, H2O, CLCL, Cl. Um, but in all, every case, I break that double bond and I grab something.